Thanks for logging on BRProud.com. This man right here to my left needs no introduction, introductions, I should say, to the faithful in purple and gold, national champ, former LSU Tiger coach, head coach Paul Maneri. And uh, coach, we were right. just talking about retirement, getting out there on the golf course, looking good out there. And Yeah, I wouldn't say looking good. That would not be the way to describe <laughs> me. But as I told you before we came on, I'm in the throes of a mediocre golf career, okay? Aaron Nolan, I got to cover both of them. Aaron Nolan, Alex Bregman, yeah. I don't know who to start with first. Yeah. I'll start with my Astros, okay? Because I'm from Houston. <laughs> Let's talk about Alex Bregman. And I, th I, I think I kind of go all, I always go back to Mikey Matuk and, and, and what he used to say, like his first few days out there in the field and those defensive, you know, uh, positions, you know, you. You would stand out there and kind of put your own pressure on them because you knew bigger pressure was coming for them and you had to get them ready. Um, what were your first few impressions when you got out there and, and you, you kind of turned the heat up on Alex? <laughs> well, if you don't mind, Brian, I'm going to back up from there. The, the uh, final four teams playing, we had a player right. on each one of those yeah. teams. Of course, we had Austin Nola on the Padres. Well, DJ LeMay was on the disabled list because of a bad toe, but he was with the Yankees. So it was really kind of uh, unique how the relationship of all those people, because Austin Nola replaced LeMay as the shortstop. You remember I might have, I don't know if you were here yet, but yep. back in 2009, we made a very, let's call it a bold decision <laughs> instead of a crazy decision, okay, where I inserted Austin Nola as a freshman and moved LeMay to second. Well then, Austin Nola remained our shortstop for three plus years. When he graduates, priority number one is to replace him, and that's Alex Bregman. Yeah. Okay, so Alex comes in. Alex actually, during the summer before his freshman year, was catching for his summer league team. Yeah, a lot of scouts thought his prospect status was going to be as a catcher. And uh, I said, look, uh, I talked to him in the summer. I said, Alex, before you, uh, uh, you know, play, play catcher for your summer team if that's what your coach wants you to do. But I would really like you to take ground balls every day at shortstop and let me decide when you arrive here in the fall whether or not you're good enough to play shortstop. Well, it took me about three minutes of the first day and I said, you have all the skills that are necessary. Now we'll teach you some of the finer points of playing. But he became the, short, the shortstop as a freshman and went on to be a consensus All-American that year and the Brooks Wallace Award winner for the National Shortstop of the Year. And the rest is history, of course. He's one of the great, not only has he, was he one of the great players in LSU baseball history, but certainly one of the top players in Major League Baseball currently. Yeah, I go back to, yeah. and, and obviously he goes through one play, you know, one play. You're talking about the error he made against much, UCLA. Yeah, yeah, summed it, it up for him. just shows you how difficult the game is. You know, Alex was the national uh, shortstop of the year, the consensus All-American team. Aaron Noll was pitching for us. Mm. Bregman's playing shortstop, 1-1 one, one game in the eighth inning. Two outs, runner at second base. And the batter hits a ground ball to Bregman, and it rolls up his left arm and into left center field, and the winning runs ends up scoring. We lose two to one. Um, but let me t let me tell you this, Brian. That uh, after the game, uh, we pulled back up to the hotel. You know, this is a devastating loss to us. We're the number one team in the country, 57 and nine. Now 57 and 10 after this loss, and nobody works harder, nobody cares more than Alex Bregman. So I know that he's going to feel responsible for this loss, and I know it's devastating, Tim. So I got off at the off the bus at the hotel, and I waited as everybody got off the bus, and you know grabbed their bags and went onto the room. The last player off the bus was Alex Bregman, and I grabbed him off to the side, and I said, Alex, do you remember way back in August when we first hit the field, and I had to decide between you and Jacoby Jones and Christian Ibarra for who was going to play shortstop, and I chose you as a freshman. The reason I chose you was for days like today because even though you made the error to lose the game and you feel awful, I want you to know that tonight when I put my head on that pillow, I'm going to go to sleep okay knowing that I chose the right guy. So don't you you're going to have to learn to shake this off and let's go go out there and get him the next game. He went back to that field at TD Ameritrade and probably had the highlight of the entire College World Series. In 2015. Well. Absolutely. Against TCU, the ground ball up the middle. Yeah. After that error, he you know, supposedly taped he did. that picture on his locker. Well, Never forgot about The that. front page of The Advocate was a picture of him making the error, almost a full page picture. 
which I thought was kind of cruel to be honest with you. But um, Alex took that front page and taped it in his locker as a constant reminder to him how he can't ever let up, not for one day. So he used that as motivation every day to go out to the field and practice as hard as he could. Sometimes at midnight, I'd go by the field and the lights would be on. He'd be out there taking ground balls. So there's there's no accident why he's so successful. Yep. He, he has the talent, but his dedication and hard work and commitment to it all, self-confidence, all those things contribute to make him one of the greatest players, certainly that I've ever coached, and one of the greatest players in LSU baseball history. Well, and, and I've, I've spoken to several people about this, and it's it's famous, but I've never confirmed this story with you, but they have a key fob now for the <laughs> for the batting practice, right. for the batting cages because of, Alex, Alex, is that true? Alex Bregman rule. I was giving a speech downtown one night, and my wife went with me and we're driving down Nicholson heading home <laughs> and it's 10 o'clock at night and she says what, what are the stadium lights on for and I looked at her and I said oh, probably Bregman's in there taking batting practice or ground balls or something so the next day at practice I said hey Alex what were you doing about 10 o'clock last night he said oh coach I went and got one of the student managers to come out to the field and turn the lights on and hit me ground balls so I said, you know, instead of you having to drag a student manager out of bed, out of his apartment to come and hit ground balls to you or turn the lights on, we're going to put in a key system so that the players can get in with their ID card. So yeah, we call that the Alex Bregman rule. How can you not admire a kid that is that dedicated to his craft? Yeah, and when he went to the majors, it wasn't just a storybook ending. I mean, you have to work your way up through the minors. Mm -hmm. And he was once again doubted if he mm -hmm. could play shortstop at the major league level, did he mm -hmm. have the arm, people mm -hmm. said? And then third base is, man, the, the hot corner. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Well, you know, when, when they signed him, uh, he could he could play shortstop in yeah. Houston Ashes. There's no doubt, doubt about it. But when they signed him, they had Carlos Correa as their shortstop. And so Bregman, you know, as an unselfish player as he is, you know, he moves over to third base. And he plays so terrific. I've always said this about Bregman. Bregman could be an all-star in the major leagues at any position, including catcher. But any, maybe not pitcher. I don't, I don't. I've never seen him pitch. But he could play any of the of the positions and be an all-star. So he went over to third base, made himself into the best third baseman that he could be. And I figured when Correa left for uh, free agency that they would move Bregman to shortstop. But then this Pena kid has emerged, and yeah. and uh, third base is a very difficult position to play. So the fact that they have somebody that's so good at third base, you can understand why they want to leave him there. And the Houston Astros do so much shifting. Next time you watch them play, yeah. you'll see how many times Bregman's actually out at the shortstop position. I, I don't want to say this is the reason why, but this is kind of what I speculate. You know, after that error in the College World Series, it was like Bregman kind of famously like charged everything. Well, that almost helps you at third base, doesn't yeah. it? Well, you know, I'm not taking credit for teaching Bregman how to play the <laughs> infield, believe me, but that was something that we really emphasized with him was that, you know, when you attack the ground ball, you make your hop, even if it's a short hop, by being aggressive. It's, it's kind of technical stuff, but right. he, he worked so hard at it and became so good at fielding the ball on the run and then throwing the ball on the run. It's like second nature to him. And, uh, you know, I used to teach him, like, when the ball would go down from the bat off the hitter, don't, don't wait, just react quickly and just go get the ball. And I'll never forget the first night that he played in the major leagues. I was there. They were playing the Yankees on his first major league debut. And he had, like, three choppers down the third base line that he immediately, you know, the ball went off the bat straight down, and he went and got it, scooped him on a short hop, made the play, made it look easy. And I know how difficult those plays were. So, you know, I sat up there in the stands like a proud father, you know, knowing that, you know, he, he was doing it the way that he was taught. And, uh, you know, what people forget about Bregman, when he started in the major leagues, he started out 0 for 16, mm -hmm. got a hit, yep. and then went 0 for 18 right after that. So he's won for his first 35. But because he played so good defensively and he played so hard, the manager at that time, A.J. Hinch, loved Bregman so much, he just stuck with him, and eventually he ended up hitting. When people ask me about Alex, because I've obviously talked to him and I've seen him outside of, of baseball as well, it's like, you know, what's he like? You know, and he's like, well, Alex is probably this tall, but he walks in like he's the biggest guy in the room. But let me tell you something. I, I've had a lot of great players in 39 years of coaching, of course. 
Um, Bregman stands alone, not just because of his ability as a baseball player, Brian, but because of his attitude and his commitment to his team in an unselfish way. And he, if you ever watch his interviews after these big league games, you know, he gets the three-run homer the other day, and they get him, the reporter on the field has him on, you know, on the mic after the game. He's not talking about his three-run homer. He's talking about the batter before him that got on base or how good his pitcher was on his team to keep them in the game until they were able to score three runs. That's just so Bregman. He's always deflecting all the credit to his teammates. He's, he's very humble. Listen, there's not a more confident baseball player right, right. that there is, but he just doesn't tell anybody about it. And that's, the, that's what I think is so great about Alex. He has self-confidence here but he lets everybody else talk about how great he is. He doesn't need to blow his own horn. And isn't that a wonderful thing in today's day and age when everybody's trying to attract attention to themselves that Alex is, is not the me, me, me person. He's deflecting the attention to everyone. And he was that way when he was at LSU. You know, this kid could have signed for a million dollars out of high school. And I'll never forget the day he walked into my office. I'm sitting behind my desk. He'd been in school maybe a month. It was probably the end of September. And he walks through the door, and he's got this big grin on his face. And I look at him, and I say, what are you smiling about? What are you laughing about? He says, Coach, I just want to tell you how happy I am to be here. He said, if I'd have known now what I, uh, if I'd have known then what I know now, I wouldn't have signed for $18 million. I'm so glad to be here at LSU. And he acted that way every single day. He came to the field with such energy and enthusiasm, love of his teammates, love of his coaches, love of the school that he was representing, and he put it all out there on the field every single day. It's amazing. We were talking about Proud Pop, as I'm sure Sam is, but you know, also AJ and Stacy, they've oh. been front and center as well. Did you catch that moment? I mean, it's just such a, a, yeah. a tug of emotions. You want to cheer for one, and you feel bad for the other. Well, you know, I actually went to um, Houston for the last week of the regular season when Aaron pitched against Houston. Right. And I took my wife, we went over to uh, to watch Aaron pitch against Bregman. So uh, Aaron, that was the night he had six and two thirds perfect innings. And then he gave up two two hits, so it's a one nothing game. He gave up two hits and then, the, and then they hooked him, but they held on and won the game and made the playoffs. Well, after the game, Bregman picked Aaron and I up and we went out to a late dinner and then the next day we were supposed to have lunch with Aaron. But I think Aaron, Aaron came down with the flu overnight, you know, a little bit of celebration from making the playoffs the night before. So I told Aaron, hey, we'll get together in the off season. Don't worry about it. Well, anyway, I, you know, while I'm watching the game, I'm texting with A.J. Nola, Aaron's father, saying this is unbelievable what he's doing. You know, he looks so great, whatever. Well, of course, you know, they make the playoffs and Austin Nola's team makes the playoffs. So they're going to meet each other now. In the, um, in the league championship series. So it was just, you know, A.J. Nolan's texting me saying, oh, this is, cr you know, crazy. I'm so, I'm so stressed out. And I'm like, A.J., don't be stressed out. Enjoy it. You are the envy of every father in America, not only to have two sons in the major leagues, but two sons playing against each other for the pennant. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose, and you're going to be neutral. But um, it's just an amazing accomplishment. But Stacy and AJ Nola are such wonderful parents. They raised those two kids with the, the value system and that work ethic and every quality that you would want your child to have. I know you're a new father, Brian. And um, listen, the, the Nolas have a they they have it figured out how to parent their children. Austin Nola, I always say, should be the poster child of LSU baseball. Not only was he an outstanding ball player for us, but his unselfishness, his attention to, work, to classes. He graduated in four years. He did more community service work than 10 players combined. I mean, he was just the most fantastic kid that you ever met in your life. And Aaron is certainly cut of the same mold. Oh, yeah. So it was, a, it was a unique experience for the parents to deal with them competing against each other. But, you know, it's not a one-man team, and the Phillies ended up beating the Padres, so the Phillies move on. And now, and now we got Aaron going against Bregman, and they were roommates. Bregman replaced his older brother at shortstop, and they became roommates, Aaron and Alex. That's amazing. It, and by the way, kind of also ironic that you just alluded to it, that the Astros essentially allowed the Phillies into the playoffs. 
and now the Phillies could eliminate the Astros in the World Series. <laughs> I didn't think about it that way. That's right. You know, it's funny because I was sitting with uh, Alex in the dugout before the game, after the batting practice was over and the rest of the team was back in the clubhouse, and we visited for about 15 minutes, and he's like, Ah, we're going to beat Aaron tonight. We have a good game plan against him. <laughs> well, that game plan didn't get work out too well. They pitched six and two-thirds perfect innings against him and led the Phillies to the playoffs. So it, it's going to be a great ball game Friday night. I kind of wish that I was hoping that Aaron would be pitching on Saturday because I wanted to go over to Houston with my son, but he's a den practicing dentist now, and he's got a full, full uh, schedule on Friday, so we can't go over Friday night, so we'll have to watch from, from the uh, comfort of my home. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be unique watching Aaron going against Alex with the world championship on the line. Yeah. It, as, as a coach, do you sit back and go, Okay, you have to completely go with a completely different game plan if you're Bregman and the Astros going against Nola, or do you expect some adjustments from Nola as well? Nola's so good, yeah. Brian. You know, he, you could game plan all you want against him. It doesn't matter. He'll he'll adjust to what he needs to do. He can pitch inside. He can pitch outside. He can throw his breaking ball and changeup, or he can beat you with his fastball. He's just the greatest pitcher I ever coached. You know, yeah. what can I say? I think he was 30 and six when he was with us for three years. Um, Two-time SEC Pitcher of the Year, only pitcher in the history of the league to do that. Aaron is so good. But the Astros are a tremendous challenge, obviously. Yeah. I think the Astros have the best overall team in all of baseball. And um, of course, Alex Bregman's a big part of that, but they got Alvarez and Altuve and all the other guys that can, can really rake too. So Aaron is gonna be up for a huge challenge, but I've watched that kid handle the challenge many, many times and nothing he does will ever surprise me. Maybe it's just because of, of when I grew up, the era that I watched pitching and you know, you go back, now, look, I, you know, I it love Nolan Ryan, but he, I was a little young even for him. So I saw, you know, in, in the Fall Classic, a lot of times Greg Maddox, mm -hmm. and you know, going against those Yankee teams sometimes, mm -hmm. and the the two seam fastball just it like it, yeah. it looks sometimes unhittable, and yeah. that's what Aaron really does the best. I mean, have you ever seen a two seam in the college game like like his? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's been some. But I don't think there's anybody that I've ever seen pitch in college baseball that has three pitches as good as his. I mean, he's got three plus pitches. Yeah. When he came to LSU, he had a he had a good fastball. I mean, it wasn't as much velocity as he has now, but he had a good fastball and a really great changeup. His curveball was just so-so. Yeah. But now his curveball might be his best pitch of the three. But on top of all that, he has the best command that is humanly possible by a major league pitcher. I mean, he, he'll go games without walking anybody. He struck out over 200 batters and walked less than 30 this year. And he was like that with us. You know, there was one stretch, I think it was in his junior year, he threw four complete games in a row. And every game, nine inning complete games, yeah. And all four starts, he threw between 102 and 108 pitches total. I mean, when you look at his line score, Nola, okay, nine innings pitched, you know, six hits, zero walks, 10 strikeouts, zero runs. That was a normal line for him when he was in college. And now you look at him in the major leagues and he's doing the same thing. This guy is, he's special. I, I think I, I want to get the stat right. I believe the stat is, since he's come to the major leagues, he's thrown nine pitches that are 96 <laughs> or above miles per hour. Did I you see this stat? Yeah, and three, three of them were of against it, Austin. It's his big brother. That's called your sibling rivalry yeah. right there. Listen, Aaron and Austin Nola have tremendous love for each other. They're as close as brothers can possibly be. I've watched them interact. Um, you know, they, but they challenge each other. They challenge each other to get better. And uh, long before Austin became a catcher in the off season, he was a shortstop in the Marlins organization. He, I would watch him catch Aaron's bullpens in the off season out at the box. And um, he'd be yelling out to Aaron to do this or do that and helping him, you know? Oh. So they, they, and Aaron looks up to Austin. Austin's mm -hmm. three years older than him. They, there's a, you know, just a, a untouchable love between the two of them, okay? But when it comes to competing against each other, did I ever tell you the story, Brian, about the first day that Aaron was a freshman and Austin was a senior and they were playing at LSU, and it was a fall scrimmage game, 
and Austin, I mean, uh, AJ and Stacy Noel are in the stands. It was the first game, but I put them on opposite teams, okay? And Aaron uh, is pitching against Austin, and Austin comes up first at bat. <laughs> Booming double off the left center field fence, okay? So now, the next time he comes up a couple innings later, he looks over at me and I put on it, we had a runner at first base, and I put on a hit and run play because he has to swing at the pitch no matter where it is now, right? So it was a pitch that Aaron was like trying to get Austin to swing at out of the zone anyway, but I making Austin swing at it. So he makes weak contact with it and hits a little weak ground ball. Comes back to the dugout and he says to me, how can you put the hit and run on? I said, I was worried about your brother's confidence after you hit that first double. I needed you to make an out so Aaron couldn't believe he could pitch at this level. <laughs> but that was the last time I had them play against each other. From then on, every scrimmage game, Austin was playing shortstop behind Aaron. Uh, that's, why the, that's why Aaron came to college. That's why Austin came back for his senior year, so that they could play together. They had never played together. When they were at Catholic High, Austin was a senior, but Aaron didn't make the varsity team right. as a freshman. So, you know, the, the, you know, the fact that the Catholic High coach didn't keep Aaron on the team as a freshman probably helped LSU baseball more than they knew at that time because wow. had they played together, perhaps Aaron would not have even come to college. All right, I'm going to turn the heat up on you. Uh, how do you pick this World oh. Series? What does this fall classic look <laughs> You're like? You're not going to get an answer out of me on that but I can promise you. Pick Listen, your favorite. Your favorite uh, uh, this is what I'm going to hope for, okay? Now, you have to understand, I have other connections too, okay? Sure. Dusty Baker used to be the manager of the Cubs, who was hired by my best friend, Jim Hendry. And the shortstop for the Phillies, Bryson Stott, how, how crazy is this? Bryson was my shortstop when I managed the USA Collegiate National Team. And the same way I worked with Bregman was the same way I worked with Stott because there were questions whether or not Stott could play shortstop as there were about Bregman. I'm going to be like, a, you know, Stacy and A.J. Nola were in the past series. Yeah. One of my two former players is going to end up as a world champion. I'm going to be happy for that player. Okay, well then let me ask it this way. As a coach, and you've got eyes on these, you've had eyes on these teams, uh, probably pitching staff edge and you know bullpen towards the Astros. Well, Phillies maybe with the long ball. No, How do you I, see this? I would say that the Astros have an advantage in almost every area. They're the best team in baseball. But I think Wheeler and and Nola go up and can match up with anybody. Yep. Verlander and and uh, whoever the number two <laughs> guy is. And I think the bullpens are very similar. Um, and I think the Astros overall play much better defense. But the Phillies just have the mojo going. You know, there's something about the Phillies right now. So I think the Astros are going to have their hands full. It could come down to having home field advantage in four of the seven games. The Astros are awfully tough to beat yeah. in, in Minute Maid Park, as you know. So we'll see. But don't, I'm not going to pick anybody, <laughs> Brian. I don't want either one of those boys mad at me. <laughs> He's biased in both ways. He's head coach, Paul, former head coach, Paul Maneri, national champion. Head coach, Paul Maneri, thanks for joining us. And thanks for logging on, BRProud.com.